Hi everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to make this sweet little autumn scene using two stamp sets by Clearly Besotted, the seasonal lineup stamp set and the seasonal sentiments stamp set. And we are going to stamp our images and then we're going to add some lovely fall foliage behind our images to create a beautiful fall landscape. And I'm gonna share some of my favorite Copic color combinations for autumn scenery and fall foliage as we make the card. Then at the end of the video, I'm gonna share some samples of cards that I made for the other three seasons as well. Okay, so let's get started with our autumn card. And the stamp that we're using is the seasonal lineup stamp set by Clearly Besotted that was just released. This August 2019 and I'm using the image that has a bunch of cute little critters that are all lined up and some of them look like they're ready for a night on the town trick-or-treating and others just look like they are getting ready to go walking on a nice fall day. They have their little scarves on and then we have one little critter holding a pumpkin. So I thought these little guys would be great to place um, in a fall foliage scene so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to color in our little critters first, and then we're going to put, build the background in behind them. And the sentiment that we're going to use comes from the seasonal sentiment stamp set, also released by Clearly Besotted this August. And the sentiment says, autumn is a second spring when every leaf is a flower. And in order to make our scene match our sentiment, we're going to add some lovely little fall foliage behind these guys and I'm going to show you my favorite Copic colors for making fall scenes. So let's focus a little bit on just coloring in the little characters before we get to that. So I colored in the little Batman masks with some neutral grays. I use neutral gray three, five, and seven for the little masks and then for the bodies of our little, I guess they're squirrels maybe, I am using some E70s for that. So E70 all the way up to E77. And I think other E families you could use here, you could use some E30s or E40s as well. I've just been playing a lot with my E70s lately. And then for our two little teddy bears in the center of the seam, we're gonna use E20s for these guys. And I like the E20 series when you're trying to make a critter stand out from a background. And this background is gonna be very, very colorful. So I wanted to make sure that our little critters had some coloring that was gonna differentiate them from the scene so they wouldn't just blend into the background. So the black masks on our little squirrels is gonna help with that. And then this bright brown color that we are coloring in the little teddy bears is also gonna aid um, to make sure that the teddy bears stand out from the scene as well. Usually this is not a color I would use for critters because normally I think it's too bright for a scene, but if you're trying to get a critter to stand out in an otherwise very colorful scene, then the E20s are great for that. For a little snail that's on top of one of the teddy bears heads, I'm gonna color him in in some rose colors and then some yellow green. For the tree stump, we're gonna use E40s for this. Um, and I think we're gonna use all the E40 markers. We're gonna use the lighter ones on the open end of our tree. And then we're gonna use the very, very dark E40s to color in the little ridges in our tree stump. For the pumpkin, we're gonna give him a base of Y21. And then we're gonna color in the shadow and the ridges with YR18. And then our midtone's gonna be YR15 a little YR12, and then I'm just gonna reinforce the shading with the YR18 and add more shading with YR27. Those are some of my favorite colors for pumpkins, that combination. For our mushrooms, we're going to color them in with R12, R29, and R39, which is a really nice combination for red objects. And then for the scarves, we're gonna use BG10, BG57, and BG53. And then we're gonna add in an even darker BG color, a BG09 on the edges once we're done. And I thought that this scene needed a little pop of color 
um, that we're not going to see duplicated elsewhere in the scene. So that's why I picked turquoise for the scarves. For the ground, I'm just filling that in with an E43 marker. And then I'm going to add a little shadow beneath it with an E42. For our foliage, we're going to give our foliage a base of Y21. And I'm just going to kind of dot it in behind the scene, behind the critters. And then I added a little bit of YR12 up in that corner and then decided that I was going to keep going with my base of Y21 first. So now we're going to add in the different colors of our foliage. And for this method, I'm just stippling the color on in uneven patterns. So we're going to have a little, little bunches of orange leaves, reddish purple leaves, and then yellow leaves, and then some yellow green leaves. So those are the four colors we're going to have going on. So for our yellow green bunches, they're going to be YG91 through 99. Um, and as the darker we go with the colors, we're going to use less and less of the darker colors. Um, just to kind of give some definition and contouring to the scene. And then for our oranges, we're going to use YR12, YR15, and then some YR18. And then also a little bit of YR27 in the areas that we want to appear darkest. And the trick here is to really not to think too much about what you're doing and just kind of have fun and doodle, honestly. Just doodle along, have fun. You know, you want your, um, your little patterns to be uneven. You want the foliage to kind of stick out at uneven edges and uneven patterns because that's how it would appear in nature. You don't want anything to be even. You want everything to just look a little bit wild and, and just kind of like windblown or, or something or just kind of messy. Maybe that's a better way to look at it. So this is a perfect project to do if you're just kind of sitting in front of the TV or listening to music and you just want your mind to wander a little bit. Honestly, the less you think about what you're doing, the better your foliage is going to come out. Because um, you just need to kind of let yourself go and just stipple along. And the three things I want you to remember are the lightest colors should take up the most space. The darkest colors should only be used for contouring, so very, very lightly. And you just want to make sure that you have an uneven pattern, that you have little bunches of foliage sticking out kind of all over the place. And now for a final touch, I'm just going to stipple some BG70 along the edges there. And again, making an uneven pattern with that BG70. I just thought this would help to um, have the color fade into the white background a little better, maybe make it look like there's some mist or um, like a cloudy day behind them. And then we're going to add some more shading onto the ground with a E44. And that looks good to me. So that's all the coloring we're going to do. Now we're just going to stamp on our sentiment that says autumn is a second spring when every leaf is a flower. And then I'm going to put this little A2 size scene into my die cutting machine and I'm going to use a stitched rectangle that is five and a quarter by four inches. And I'm just going to put that whole thing onto a fog colored card base. And then we're going to add some highlights with a white gel pen. So I'm going to add some little white dots to our mushrooms. I thought that that was a nice pop against the red. And then we're going to put some little white polka dots on the scarves on two of our little critters. And then we are going to add just some little white flecks of color in random spots on our foliage, just to make the foliage pop a little bit. You don't want to cover every square inch of the foliage. You just want to pick like little areas here and there to add some little squiggles of dots um, into the scene, just to kind of make it pop a little bit and have it look a little bit interesting. So that looks good to me. And now I'm just going to add some black glaze pen to the little critter's eyes. And that is going to do it for the autumn version of this seasonal card. So next I'm going to show you cards that I made for the other three seasons. So this card here is for winter 
and I tried to keep it with some cool chilly blue and blue green tones with a little bit of purple thrown in. This is our spring scene and I tried to keep it with some really, really light pastel shades. And then finally, this is summer. And for summer, again, I tried to keep it with some light pastel shades, making the most of all of the white space on this particular card design. So let's take one last look at the four different cards that I created using the seasonal lineup and seasonal sentiments stamp sets by Clearly Besotted. And this is a really fun and pretty quick card design if you wanna to try to make your own. Probably the spring one took me about 15 minutes and the winter one probably took about that long as well. And then the autumn one took the longest, was probably about a half hour of time to add all that foliage, but pretty quick cards overall. So that's all I have for you today, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and I will see you again soon in the next video.